All right, we're back. Another uh, first reaction album review. And we got Pink Floyd, Wish You Were Here. Um, for backstory, I actually only discovered Pink Floyd, believe it or not, in the last, like, three months. Um, I'm 25 right now, so it took me a while, <laughs> but really excited to get into their stuff uh, more, because they've just impressed me, like across the board. Um, only album I've really listened to front to back is the um, Dark Side of the Moon, which I know is one of their biggest albums. But um, I've been hearing a lot of good things about this album as well. And uh, I'm not really sure if it's going to be the same as Dark Side of the Moon or different. Open to whatever, I guess, because they're just... Um, they're so creative, I can tell with their process, so it's fine if I'm, fine if I'm surprised. Let it be good, I hope. Um, but this is a uh, five-track album, but the first and last song are really long, about 12 to 13 minutes. Uh, so I'm just going to let it play. We're going to get right into it. Um... Oh, also, weird backstory. I didn't realize. Uh, I went to a thrift store in uh, Philly, and oh, I forgot the name of the thrift store. It was one of the main, like, really popular thrift stores there. Um, pretty big size, two floors. I walked in, and um, this album cover here. I don't know if you can see that. That's probably covering, but. Um, this album cover, I actually saw it on the, uh, the ceiling of the staircase going down before I was about to leave. I was like, dude, that is an insanely wild picture. Like this guy's on fire. Literally. I was <laughs> just like, <laughs> it's just a random, like, uh, dangerous photo. I was like, okay, that's cool. But I didn't realize this is the cow, uh, cover art for uh, this album. So I was pretty dope. Uh, all right, enough yapping. Let's get into it. Um, uh, first track, "Shine On." You crazy diamond, parts one through five. I don't know what that means, but we'll just do the whole thing. Thank you. 
There's a lot to say on that track. My god. Okay, I, I can see why it's like parts one through five now. There's a lot of layers on that track. Dude. Oh. It's almost like you have to pause between each part to really uh, project what you uh, felt on that part. But if I'm going to like at least piece through what I remember um, part by part. Um, first part reminded me of um, like this retro. Even though this was retro, this is the 70s. <laughs> It took me back to like this retro spaceship um, flight path setting where it's just like you're in this like Star Trek looking like ship and you're just like going through space just full speed ahead. I don't know why it gave me that vibe as soon as we started. So I feel like we were on a journey building up definitely big build up. Um. That makes a proper intro song too to an album. It's a nice build up. In my opinion, that was nice. And then uh got into I think my favorite part. I don't know. The second the second part, I'll get to the last part uh soon. But the second part I think might have been my favorite where it was like the do -de -do -de. That was ballsy. Loved that kind of just heavy um, four note riff, and it just hangs after they play. It just hangs out there in the air. You could you could like feel the density of it as they just let it ring until they do it again. And then um, I was gonna say the vibe that gave me was like <laughs> some wild west desert. I felt like I was like uh, strolling through on a horse. Like, just kind of, like, scoping out the area really cautiously. I felt like something was about to go down. It was really, like, specific image I got in my head when I had my eyes closed. That's why I, like, close my eyes to their songs. It just, it gets you this, like, um, simulated vision or environment. And you just can't uh, deny it. It's just, like, sending you live feed to your head of, like, um, this vision from their sound. Uh, it's crazy. I think they're one of the best at it. But um, I think the rest of the track, it like, it like picks up with the drums, which I liked. It picked up the intensity. Um, and then the, the lyrics, of course they came in there. Uh, they were, it was talking about, it sounded like, um, some young person, um, they had this shine to them, uh, and this kind of curiosity, it looked like, um, in their eyes. And then their eyes, I think they were hinting at they're slowly fading, that, that shine that they were, um, once having in their lives. And, uh, the, the band was noting how you gotta keep shining on and keep having that, like, you know, that, that chip on your shoulder the spark in your eye, whatever. So <laughs> it sounded like, um, and also the diamond thing got in my head, like diamond in the rough, um, in the desert. That's what the setting came in as well. Like there, maybe everyone's looking for diamonds in the desert. That could be something. And they're hard to find. Um, cause maybe they, they once had them and then they're gone, you know? That's real. Um, and then it got to, I think, my second favorite part at the end was the um, that light uh, acoustic finger picking. It's like did it and then and then and then and then and then kind of thing. Um, that was like super nice, but the sax had this really jazzy vibe to it, but at the same time, it was very like uplifting. Which is, which is such an interesting contrast because the jazz usually is like a um, a very mysterious vibe with, with the chord progressions they choose. But then that 
acoustic sound gave this gave it an undertone of like um um of optimism and stuff which was so cool and it, it like put me in a trance for a little bit um i don't think i've ever heard something like that so that was freaking dope uh but yeah nice fade out um all right i think let's move to the next track welcome to the machine Oh, yeah. Um. I like the acoustic direction so far in this album. It's pretty prevalent. These big uh, sounding chords, bright sounding strings. It's like the forefront, which is nice. Um. And different. From Dark Side of the Moon. Um, trying to think about certain aspects of the song. I mentally noted um, the lyrics for one. Yeah, it sounded sounded like um, to me it was, it was a pretty powerful message saying uh, like. Welcome to the society that we live in. We are completely watching what you are doing and also trying to brainwash you into think certain ways and to dream certain ways and to give you a false sense of control. Um, which is more or less true in this modern day. <laughs> so they were like ahead of their time with that message, which is amazing. Um. Yeah, the lyrics are super strong. Yeah, the emotion of the song was super um super heartfelt. And like they were it felt like they were like it felt like this this uh the point of view for it was the singer and he was like saying welcome dude or whoever you are. I'm going to tell you these things that are happening to you in a way maybe it can help you realize you know, you're in the matrix, like you're stuck. Maybe you can get out of it. Maybe you can't. But he, it's like he's just pointing it out. He's not telling you 
like this is not happening or this is happening like he's telling you both of these things are happening um you know you can control some of the things that you're doing and some of these things you were born to um from the beginning be uh brainwashed to uh do otherwise so it's like you gotta figure it out for yourself which i like that it's very up in the air Uh, what else? I like the synth. In the second half of the song, I was really like, um, machinery sounding. Ironically. Robotic. It felt like you were like plugged in. You could say like to the Matrix, like what he was describing. Because I think we all, we are, are, we all are plugged in to a certain degree and we're not, no one's completely out of it. I don't even think it's possible. Um, being that being society um yeah powerful super super real all right next song uh have a cigar <laughs> First things first, I gotta say that's um guitar solo saved that song. Uh I say that because I didn't really like the the cadence of the uh, the singer in the song. It didn't sound like David Gilmore, it sounded like somebody else. Um not not saying that singer sounded bad, like um pitch wise or anything, but um the actual structure of the, the um I don't know. I don't know what the word is. Like the the melody of the the words, it just it felt off. I don't know. It didn't feel on time with the song. It just felt a little weird for me. Uh, I couldn't really like groove into the track. The drums were heavy though. I liked that drum um, presence. Um, big bass drum and snare. But that guitar solo. 
uh, was just filthy. It just had so much uh, range all over the track. Um, yeah, pro- probably my least favorite track so far. But um, the lyrics, what I caught it, it sounded like it was just saying, like, S- relax, whoever they're talking to, relax, dude, have a cigar. Um, stressing too much. So it sounds like maybe I missed some stuff, though. I was just listening um, strictly. Um, all right, next song. I think I've heard this song like a good few times. I just never listened to it fully, I think. Um, I'm going to listen to it anyways, just in case I miss something. Uh, wish you were here. It's like the wind blowing at the end. That was weird. Yeah, I definitely have heard and um, I think played that song somewhere a couple times at least. Um, It's like unclear to me if it's referencing one person saying wish you were here. I think I heard uh, one time that this song was about their uh, their first um, band uh, roster together. Like uh, they lost a band member early. It seems like Sid or something. I don't know. Uh, one of the band members that like did had some mental issues or something. I think he had to leave. I th- maybe they were talking about him, but I didn't really want to look into it and spoil the song. Um. Yeah, I guess it, it, it seems like it's it's if it's not one person, it's just someone someone you miss in general. <laughs> so it sounds like uh. Yeah, it seems like a uh. Hey, um, it's the word. It's like expressing the emotion of of void. Like it feels void of something, or maybe wanted to cut ties or <laughs> not cut ties. 
uh, excuse me, uh, get closure with something or, or something, someone or something. So I think it's it's a very like uh, personal song. Yeah, sounds like it was good. Nice acoustic again. They they're strong on the acoustics here. And um Yeah, so far it's uh it's been very different from Dark Side of the Moon. For sure. Um all right, let's just let's just finish the last track and then um uh, I could do more um analysis. Shine on you crazy diamond parts six through nine. Uh, this is the other big track. Excited for this one, actually.
Wow. I'm still coming back to reality. Oh man. So the the first shine on you crazy diamond and the second shine on you crazy diamond. I don't know if they uh link per se. Oh man. But like I like how they use that same middle part uh with the lyrics in both tracks. That was cool to kind of uh compare them, but then the beginning and outros were kinda different. Um Oh man, dude the Guitar playing in this band is so badass. God, so ballsy with the licks that um, they use. Just, just so gritty sounding. And then you have that psychedelic, whatever the hell that instrument is. The synth. I'm going to call it the synth because I don't know what it's called, but it's probably some name back then. Uh, it was for like a single use uh, electronic sound. Like what we were hearing at the the end there, especially. Um, that's such a cool sound. It's like this like, uh, you know, really bright, but warm at the same time. Buzzing synth. I, I love that. It's so good. Um I think it's an artist named uh, Plantasia who did an album. Something to do with plants. Uh, music for plants or something. Dude, it's the same instrument, I think. It's so cool. But uh, anyways, the yeah, this overall, this album, like, it seems short because it's only five tracks, but it's massive, obviously, because of the, the duration of the songs. Uh, so, I mean, it's just constantly... Um, getting versatile with with the the theme of each song it, it just it was completely different from each other one except for shine on your crazy diamond of course it just felt like a a very versatile project just like uh dark side of the moon um yeah i was in a trance for most of this album and that's a good thing very um, thought provoking, but then also it's sometimes very like uh, brain calibrating, like clearing clearing your head, like no thoughts. Um, I was just very, I was very pulled by each song. It, well, it wasn't really like stagnant. It was always something to latch on to, which is what I love about Pink Floyd. They're so uh, innovative. And um, and good at you know transitioning from from songs and transitioning from choruses to verses. They're they're excellent with their uh, blending of synth and stuff. And um, I think favorite track is probably the first "Shine On You Crazy Diamond." Just so many. Um, Super cool riffs. Um, the build up was just insane. I love a good build up. Um, so so much timing in that track that that just sets the tone for the album. Um, what do I mean by that? Yeah, like it had a little bit of the classic rock feel. They they were sneaking in there in the chorus, but at the beginning you couldn't tell what it was at all. Um, it it's it just was so vague. The like it could have been anything, literally. 
um, like it could have turned into just like a, a psychedelic uh, synth track, but it didn't, um, which is so cool. She's just su super. Um, what's the word for them? Like. Um, Super unpredictable. That's the word, yeah. Um, which I really like that from them. So I'm going to keep checking out their stuff. Um, I would, I'm definitely coming back to this album. Uh, it's just nice, like, car ride drive sounds all day. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Overall, this album, uh, I, I don't know if it was a concept album. I don't think it was. I think it was just like a feel-good album. Just jam. A lot of jamming. I'm all for the jams, too. So Sweet. All right. That'll be all.